Hi all, this is Mel from Classic Exhibits. I hope you're staying safe and sane. Today, we're gonna to talk about lighting. Have you ever noticed that there are those who have lighting in their booth or at their event, and there are those who use lighting to showcase their messaging or create a theme? But there's rarely anyone in the middle. We're fortunate to have Rob Cohen from Display Supply and Lighting with us today. He'll discuss the latest trends and products that ensure your clients truly shine. Sorry, I had to do that. As you have questions, please enter them into the questions panel and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Rob, it's all yours. Thanks, Mal. I really appreciate this opportunity. I want to say hello to everybody. Um, wish we could be together, um, but uh, I guess technology is what has to do for now for all of us. As I look at those in attendance, it's great to see a lot of old friends as well as some some new names, and hopefully we'll all um, we'll all get to learn something uh, from the presentation. Um, I assume everyone can see my screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is a brief overview of our company and what we do, and then I'll dive into what we call our design time presentation, and hopefully that can uh, stimulate some ideas that you all may have. For projects going forward. Bear with me one second here. There we go. So um, DSNL has been serving the trade show and experiential industries now for 41 years. We're headquartered in Itasca, Illinois, and we have personnel in Illinois, Massachusetts, Western New York, and Nevada. Uh, what do we do? We provide reliable, high quality, lighting and supply products. This presentation will um, focus almost exclusively on lighting. Supply products range from everything from Velcro to specialty flat extension cords, uh, roto locks, uh, power supplies, uh, replacement light bulbs, as well as uh, transformers. We provide lighting layout and design and product selection assistance. So the best way we can work with folks is they share their design ideas with us and we come back to them with various recommendations as to how lighting can be integrated into their design. We do have a specialty rental program. Uh, this is for some higher end, more programmable lighting products, uh, especially where purchase is not possible. We rent those products out on a uh, per show basis or per event basis. We also have application engineering services that we offer. Uh, these would include where we program these programmable fixtures for you. We write the programs, download them, and have them all ready to go when you take the product out of the box. On-site installation oversight, as well as project coordination. Like Classic, uh, we give back and support our industry. Sorry about that, we work from home, we have the dog. Um, and um, we support the EDPA, the EDPA Foundation, the Randy Smith Memorial Golf Classic, um, as well as the Exhibit for Smiles program, which provides gifts to folks, uh, children, who are terminally ill around the holidays. We teach at the Fashion Institute of Technology in their master's program in exhibition design, experiential marketing. And we provide support also to the folks over at Bemidji State and their undergraduate program. We just believe that giving back is part of what we all need to do to help make the industry strong for the future. DSNL can do more than just sell you products. If you want us to just be a vendor, people can call us, place their orders, and we can ship product out. But our true value comes when we're a collaboration partner. We can assist in bringing designs to life, searching out solutions and alternatives for project, working with you on pricing when jobs are tight on margin, supporting you in the use of products from prototyping, to production, to installation, to use. And we care more about more than, we care about more than just this sale. 
We're looking toward building our relationship and are always working on the future of our relationship. What do we ask for in return? We ask for respecting our efforts and work. And just as you don't want your design shared with someone down the road, we ask that you don't share our lighting design ideas or bill of materials with others as this is our intellectual property. We wanna remind everybody that um, it's always caveat emptor out there, uh, buyer beware. And it's not about what a product costs you, it's all about what does it cost to use the product. So for that, we try to make sure that folks focus on the total cost to use a product. And that consists of the time to source the correct product, the actual cost of that product, but also the labor time and materials to assemble the product and install it for use, as well as the cost to repair the product if it's damaged on show floor site and if uh, a special skill set is needed to repair it on site. And those last two bullet points often exceed the actual cost of procuring the product. So we think that that's pretty important to keep in mind. So you're better off paying more upfront if that is necessary to have reliable, easy to use solutions. The SNL is about innovation. Uh, on the screen here, we're showing you four of our more recently introduced innovations. And even during the time of this COVID-19 crisis, we have five new products in the pipeline right now, waiting for the right time for when the industry starts to rebound. On the um, far left over here, we have our new flat extension cord with miniature male and female ends, both of which will fit through any 30 millimeter hole. So um, the female end you plug into the top, when the male end is plugged in and power is coming through the cord set, there's an LED indicator light inside of here that goes on. These are available in 15, 25, 50, 75, and 100 foot lengths. And it's a flat 14-3 extension cord that fits nicely underneath carpeting and flooring. Here we have a very simple 29 millimeter light clip, simply drops into the, the um, 30 millimeter holes, and then any of our standard base arm lights slide onto the top of this uh, light clip. Over here is a slim recess fixture on the far right. These are truly very thin recessed fixtures, spring-loaded clips available with different color faces. The unique part here is that each one comes with its own control box. And by moving this toggle switch here, you can switch between 4,000, 5,000, or 6,000 degree Kelvin. So you're selecting the Kelvin temperature that you want. And then a single extension cord to plug the light in. These are extremely bright. And then down here is something we introduced last year at Exhibitor Show. These are stackable battery packs. So depending on the amount of power that you need, we calculate out that wattage, the number of hours you want it to run without recharging, and then recommend the appropriate number of power packs within the stack and the appropriate control module um, to deliver the power that you need to run by battery. I'll be done with the boring conversation and we'll move on to how we can support you and some different projects that we've been involved in over time. Um, this is um, where we support folks on the mock-up side. This was a project we did with Fabric Images in Illinois. Here they were having this large structure and needed to show that super high output LED tape in a controlled light environment would throw sufficient light to give some illumination to this board. Note here, all of our LED tape is plug and play. So there's no soldering that needs to take place. So that goes to the ease of use and lowering the labor costs and the use of the product. This was a prototyping we did at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, 
These are very large 60 pound fixtures. This large concrete structure, which to me looks like a prison, is actually an award-winning design for a hotel. There are windows on the front and back side, but the sides are all solid concrete. This hotel on the campus is also used as a conference center. So they wanted to light up the sides of the building so that when people were on other parts of the campus at night, they would know what direction they needed to walk back to to identify the hotel structure. This is a retail application that we did with uh, Moss's retail division in South America. It's a large tented walkway over an escalator. And there were also structural columns that were wrapped in tension fabric. All the lights that were used were synchronized so that the tents and the columns changed color at the same time. We actually delivered the product all pre-programmed so that the electricians in South America at the mall just took them, lined them up, plugged them in, and they were off and running. Jen asked, um, going back to the rechargeable batteries, Jen LeBruz asked, how long um, do the recharge batteries last? So that's really a function of how much power you need we do the calculation based on the wattage use and the time to recommend what size batteries you need prior to needing to recharge them. And we size that appropriately for your particular need. This is an example of a conversion at a hotel of a ballroom to a restaurant. Uh, we worked with the general contractor and the designer of the space to be able to provide everything from these hanging pendant lights to the curved monorails up above to the lighting underneath the bar area where the customers would be sitting. So we can engage in a wide range of design and types of lighting. Next, we have some examples of exterior lighting. Up top is uh, Boathouse Row in Philadelphia, where the college uh, crew teams store their skulls. Down below is the Hyatt in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Both of these are using a similar product. They're LED nodes on wire, and each individual node is addressable. So we can be writing programming to tell node one to do one thing, node number two to do something else, maybe node number three to be completely dark, uh, and so on. And obviously this can be done in a very large scale format. Uh, the one in Philadelphia to me is particularly beautiful where you get the reflection of the structure and the light off of the water. This is an example of uh, an exhibit display using RGB changing color LED tape, um, as well as white light. What I love about this is how simple curves in the design were used to bring uh, just a glow of illumination to attract attention, or the face of desks were routed out with plexi faces to bring illumination there and not in a disturbing way, but in a way to draw attention and to bring people in. These are not television screens or monitors. These are actually um, flat LED panels, backlighting static graphics, and then glow lighting underneath the aluminum extruded structure. Again, just to attract some attention, and to tie in some of the lighting with some of the, of the coloring of the structure. These LED panels are available up to five feet by 10 feet. If CAD files are provided, these can be routed out for custom design. We can even pre-drill holes so that these can be mounted uh, using standoff pucks. Architainment is the merger of 
architecture and entertainment. This is in downtown Chicago, down at Millennial Park. This gets frozen over for outdoor ice skating, and we lit the outside three faces of the structures to provide changing colored light and a dynamic look to the area. Another exhibit display, here the hanging signage for Shire Pharmaceuticals was lit with changing colored light. And then in the reception counter, we were using linear products that were synchronized to be the same color as the structure up above. It also shows a way that if you wanted to, you could provide the four corners of this exhibit with unique color. So that, for example, the front left, maybe you make that green and that's all gastro drugs and the front right is blue for respiratory product, and the back maybe is red in the back right corner for cardio products and so on. So that lighting can be used to help identify and move traffic along to appropriate places. Next, we have a project we did uh, for an exhibit house involving Mercedes-Benz. Uh, there were budget constraints here as every client has budget issues. Here we have changing colored light on tension fabric back walls, but this ring was never going to change color. So they wanted to take cost out of the budget. So we actually used T5 fluorescent fixtures and slid a colored gel sleeve over them to give that single color of a uh, amberish color off around the ring rather than using a programmable fixture that would have been more expensive. We're still selling a large number of LED arm lights. Here we're using a couple of arm lights to light up a header. Down below we want controlled lighting, so we use some lower powered recessed fixtures so as not to interrupt with these computer monitors, but still deliver lighting over the graphic area. So understanding the design and all the elements that are gonna be within the space helps us to recommend the appropriate lighting product. This was several, several years ago at uh, a, an exhibit of fabric images at Exhibitor Live. The reason I show it is that these 12 foot tall tension fabric structures we're being lit with lights only down on the base. There's no light up above here. When you see lighting through the sheer fabric, that's actually lighting coming from the ceiling. We used a little trick here and had them just make a gator foam top to block out the ambient light and reflect the red light back down so that we were able to deliver a nice even flow of lighting up and down the entire structure and then great white light inside of these tension fabric pendants to um, show off and give good work, good uh, illumination for folks to work by and meet with others. This is a showcase area, an open one within the JCK area of the Plum Club, which is the very high end of the uh, JCK jewelry show. So we're using these tall fixtures where the heads not only tilt, but they rotate left and right so that they can shine light around these showcases. We also have internal light that we provided inside of the closed showcases. Another exhibit within the JCK space using these super thin surface mount puck lights. They give off a cone of light into these uh, display windows on the outside of the display. Here we see an attendee getting ready to walk inside of this mock retail store within the exhibit space. This is a project that we did um, with an exhibit house for the McDonald's corporate headquarters. This is located in downtown Chicago. And what happens is that McDonald's serves different food around the world based on the culture. So on different days, they're um, 
they're serving different food within their corporate restaurant. And what they wanted to do was to light up McDonald logos on a map of the world uh, for where the food is from that's being served on that particular day. So we not only help to identify an appropriate light source to use, but our application engineers created a unique switching system so that with a flip of a switch, the different logos could be turned on and off easily by the personnel in the restaurant, given the food being served on any particular day. This was our own booth at Exhibitor Live in 2019. We ran the entire 10 by 20 booth off of battery packs. Um, so while we've left the packs exposed for people to see, these could easily be contained within the underside of a counter or inside of a closet space built out um, on show site. Up top, we're running RGB flexible neon light, so it can be curved around the structure. We also have that similar type of lighting around the base of the um, center island here. Inside of these cubby, cubby displays, we have our micro profile LED lights. Our LED modular strips are used to illuminate the light boxes, both on the outside of display and the internal side. I'll talk a little more about those fixtures a couple of few slides down. And then up top here, we're actually lighting up this large area using a more modern form of track light called Lumarail. These LED pucks are actually attached magnetically inside of the Luma rail so that they can just be slid to the position that you want. So if someone was to add a television monitor here, you could easily slide the light away or just pull it and remove it so that the light did not interfere with the monitor or if products were added over here and you wanted to add more lighting, then you just popped a module in place over there. This is a display we did for Canon um, using, again, LED nodes on wires, created a, uh, a mesh screen that was hung. It was connected to a video system monitor so that actual video could be played through these screens. And these were actually available on a rental basis. This is an example of how lighting can be used within a floor space. Well, we don't do a lot of raised flooring here in the States, it is a very dynamic way of drawing attention. This happens to be a residence down in Mexico, and there was a plate on a wall with eight buttons pre-storing shows so that the homeowner could just push a button and cycle through various pre-programmed shows for the lighting in the floor. This was a hardwood floor cut out milk plexi overlay, and then lighting underneath it. This was a project we did for Octonorm. Uh, this is actually a 16 foot by 16 foot graphic display with only perimeter lighting. Now we were partly able to cheat because of this graphic. Typically we would say we'd wanna keep it between, no bigger than 10 foot by 10 foot with just perimeter lighting and not having to supplement with anything else. Our modular strips are a little different than a lot of folks. We have no exposed solder joint, so it makes the connection more rugged. We have strain relief barrel connectors so that a linear product just plugs one into another. Custom lensing to spread the light evenly. We also have pre-drilled mounting holes and an insulating cap over it so that no one can screw too deeply into the um, strip and damage it. And we also use black shrouds, not white ones, because with those seated down onto the circuit board, it minimized the amount of light leakage, even with a white graphic. So here's an example of a white graphic. This one is off on top. Down below it's on, and you can see there's no hot spots, no striations, 
no leakage of light and any shadowing around any of the perimeter of that graphic. This was a project from last year's Consumer Electronics Show. It was an MC squared project for Otterbox. I show it because it's really dynamic to see how lighting can be used around a graphic to give off a halo effect and how beautiful lighting can really be cast down some faux brick um, looking back walls. Also, here's a light box. So everything integrated, looking really beautifully and simple, um, where the lighting is the accent and it's not overpowering anything, nor are you seeing any um, lighting fixtures as a result of those applications. This is a custom desk we just lit. Uh, it's for Hillen Partners. They just installed it last week. We used our new micro profile LED fixtures both in their trophy case on either side with a, an attached dimming module, as well as on the underside of the workspaces and lighting up the face and the side face return um, of this custom L-shaped desk. This is a product we introduced a couple of years ago, completely flexible LED sheets that require no heat sinks. So this could be mounted to gator foam, cardboard, whatever you needed to create your substructure. And you could actually create a complete um, serpentine S-curve and have your lights equidistant from the face material. What we did at Exhibitor Live that year was we created this circular structure. Uh, Tectonics built this for us. They said it looked like a big sippy cup, so they made a straw to go into it. And each third of this, we did in a different color temperature to show off how different color temperatures of light looked, ranging from 2,700 Kelvin to 5,700 Kelvin on the same or similar graphics. This is an application on a trade show floor where the Lumarail product with the Magnetic LED pucks was used for overhead lighting. It's also ideal for a double deck, lighting the uh, like a conference room maybe on the lower level of the deck. Um, and truly a small amount of lighting can really give a big pop of light here. These are really bright LED modules. Custom Exhibit House asked us to jump in and do their version of Cash Cab uh, on a trade show floor. They purchased this uh, grayish uh, Nissan minivan, painted it taxi cab yellow, added the graphics for their exhibitor. Inside, we used changing color RGB lighting. We wrote a custom program powered off of an iPad. So as the attendees came inside the cash cab to play the game, this is the keypad, and based on the beginning of the show, whether they answered a question correctly or incorrectly, um, or whether they won or lost the game, different lighting programs could be played. So that was a fun kind of custom project to be involved with and bring an exhibit house's idea truly to life on a trade show floor. Permanent installation at Towson University down in Maryland, LED tape to give a halo effect around uh, their mascot on the wall. Simple recessed and LED panel lighting up above. This is in the entrance to their athletic center. Masson is the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network, sort of the regional version of uh, ESPN. This is at Camden Yards in Baltimore. We did a similar setup at the Washington Nationals ballpark. It's an outdoor television studio. So up above, we use these color temperature adjustable light fixtures, white light fixtures, and had those connected to a slide dimmer so that uh, I, I didn't mention the Nationals just because Harold Mintz is a fan. 
Um, but thank you for that comment, Harold. Um, the slide dimmer was in the control of the cameraman, though, because uh, based on daytime, nighttime, dusk, cloudy conditions, summer conditions, uh, cloudy conditions, sunny conditions, they need a different color temperature of white light for the HD broadcast. So up above took care of that. Um, at the desk itself and back, we had changing colored light that was programmed to match up to the sponsor's color. And then we just had white light in the two side boxes. Um, as that wasn't going to be changing, those were static graphics. Here's the um, Sports New York permanent television studio. Uh, you see it here up top in a more mundane view. Down below, it's in all of its glory and color. We provided all the lighting here from the um, par birdie fixtures up above to all the lighting around the desk, integrated in the desks and all the columns. The challenge wasn't the lighting. Here, everything had to be tied back to a central control desk for the engineers and tied into the technology they were using so that they could easily adjust things based on the effects to be given during the cost of the broadcast. Here's a desk that was done for ESPN by simply changing this face piece. It was used on a number of different broadcasts. Here it's the NFL Insider Show with both up and down lighting around the face of the desk. This is in downtown Dallas. It's kinetic moving sculpture that we're lighting with changing colored light. And you can see how dynamically different this sculpture can look based on different lighting being provided. This is in uh, Great Worcester, Massachusetts. It's a private ice skating rink with two slabs of ice. It's used by the um, uh, for practice by the New, New York Islanders, uh, New York Rangers farm team. It's also used by four prep schools and three colleges. What we did was we only did the lighting in the vestibule with a great high powered white linear product up top. And the face here of the structure in changing colored light. In the manager's office, they had a control pad with 16 programs on it. And based on either the team that was uh, using the facility on the given time, or whether or not it was the city of Worcester or rented out to some other organization, they have 16 different light programs that run based on the just a push of a button to change them. And here's a quick little video just showing light chasing around the entrance to the structure and bringing a real dynamic feel um, for the facility. This is in Wooddale, Illinois. It's a clock tower um, constructed by the town. Uh, we worked off of this rendering, this line drawing that we were given to be able to deliver changing colored side illuminated panels, as well as custom made LED signs to fit at a 45 degree angle on all four sides um, of the uh, structure. This was the iconic Coca-Cola bottle project that we did at the old Turner Field uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, home of, the former home of the Atlanta Braves. This is a 40 foot tall Coca-Cola bottle sitting on a 10 foot air conditioned base that contained all of the electronics. 1500 feet of fiber optic cable ran from the top of left field down through the basement of the stadium and up to a control room three stories above home plate. Here you see some uh, pictures at daytime, dusk and nighttime showing the dynamic different views of the bottle. The label was a custom made LED sign built to the contours of the structure of the bottle. It's uh, 
10 foot tall, 360 degree sign. Here you see it in a number of different uh, formats and colors. Here's a video that we shot with just a cell phone camera to show off some of the dynamic effects of that bottle. Shockingly, even in Atlanta, when the Braves moved to their new stadium, Pepsi outbid Coca-Cola and got the rights to the new stadium. So this bottle was uh, just taken down and uh, discarded. So that's the quick presentation. I, I, I thank you for your time. Um, we thank you for your design time, and we hope that as our world evolves, we can get together and create something together. Hey, Rob, do you mind? I have a couple questions. Go right ahead. I'm more than willing to hang around and answer questions. Um, talk a little bit about, you'd mentioned rentals early on, that you had some products that were available for rent. What Can you kind of talk a little bit about what the, the rental options are from DSNL? Sure. So um, it could involve white light to changing colored light. It's primarily the line of the Color Kinetics product, which tends to be a bit more expensive. Um, we do those rentals typically for a trade show based on a two-week rental to give time to ship out, get into a facility, set up, tear down, ship back. But we can do longer-term or shorter-term rentals as well. And we take a look at each particular project um, and work with folks on the pricing side of them. Um, it looks like Harold has a question. What do you think are some of the more prominent coming design trends? Good question. So, um, you know, last year at an exhibitor show, we saw a lot more hardwood around, shockingly, on the show floor. Um, personally, I still think the trends go hard with aluminum extrusion and tension fabric. People want to do more and more with LEDs. Folks want to move into programmable LEDs, backlighting tension fabric until they see the cost of doing that. Um, and when that happens, we talk about other ways of using dynamic programmable LED lights to deliver that. For example, when we talked about the LED modular strips around the perimeter, we even have RGB versions of that so that you can deliver changing colored light behind the graphics the same way that you can deliver white light. I also think that we're in for a lot of changes and we don't know what those even are as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. I know we all hope that's sooner rather than later. And that's namely gonna be how many folks are gonna opt for more rental options to start or how can they simply retrofit designs that they have to look a little different. And I think one of those dynamic ways is with lighting. Um, so. I really think that we're going to see a lot with that as we come out of this crisis. So uh, you kind of mentioned it, Rob, and maybe you did address it, but I didn't understand it. One of the things that, that we certainly saw last year at Exhibitor Live was a lot of the, the motion LED programming, especially just kind of standalone light boxes, mm -hmm. um, some of those things obviously coming out of Asia. Um, what um, I, I'm trying to understand really if that's just a, a trend or if that's just a fad. So I think people would love it to become a trend, but I think when they see the expense of it, they realize that the vast majority of exhibitors can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, what that is, is it's called pixel control so that you can talk to each individual LED pixel to tell it to do things when you want it to do it. We've certainly seen B matrix go large with it um, in terms of introducing it with modular panels to build LED screens around it. But again, when people see the price of that, you know, it really becomes out of reach for a lot of folks. We are looking into things like smaller versions and rollable screens so it could be dropped into a smaller segment of a space and 
become more affordable. Um, the problem is coming down with the standard size that could really work well and work on costing for that. But we're, we're deep in discussions with a couple of vendors to see how financially feasible that can really be for folks. Um, and Rob, I have one last question for you is, and I think, I think as you mentioned that as we come out of COVID-19, there'll probably be a lot more rentals just because people's budgets will be smaller. I think people will want more flexibility, but I also believe there'll be a lot more portable. People will move into portables. Um, and the challenge in a lot of the portables, especially in the backlighting of the graphics, is simply the depth of the extrusion. Uh, it, are you seeing lighting solutions that allow for more backlighting on extrusions that are, don't have to be quite as deep? Yeah, so that's a great question, Mel. Right, we're, we go, and, it, and the answer is gonna be is it all depends on the size of the graphic. And if we're talking about substantially sized graphics, then an inch and a half depth, we're able to, to do internal lighting and accomplish that. Um, smaller graphics, we can go even tighter. And when I say that, you know, that's about the, we'll call it the three foot by three foot maximum um, to be able to evenly throw light, maybe four foot by four foot. Um, and be able to get the depth of that down to about an inch um, for depth. We're not seeing anything that's powerful enough to go less than that yet. Um, we could go to the flexible sheets though with the proper diffusion layer and keep it down around an inch even in large format. I don't see any more questions, Rob. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, final thoughts are I wish everyone hopefully continued good health and a, uh, and a vaccine so we can launch our industry as fast as possible. Thanks, everybody. On behalf of Classic Exhibits, we appreciate you attending. Um, if you have an opportunity, we will have a Zoom go to meeting on uh, partitions and office environments in a kind of healthy post-COVID world that Kevin is hosting on Tuesday. Reach out to your regional um, sales manager, Harold, Jen, or Tom, and they'll give you the information on that. Otherwise, stay safe and stay sane, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity, Mal.